Learn to create an action game in Unreal Engine 5 at unfgames.com. In this video, I will show you how to create a rope like this from scratch, and then we will use blueprints to deform it and create several variations. So the first thing we need to do is to create a rope mesh, and it's going to be very easy. Just, just go to select mode, go to modeling, and here we will select a cylinder. Okay, by default, it comes using these values. Okay, so if I click here, you will have a preview of how the mesh looks like. That's a little bit too big for me. So what I will do is like put a radius of six, something like that. And it's a little bit too tall. So I'm gonna put it something like 80. Okay, so before accepting, um, I want to make sure if I go to the wireframe mode by pressing Alt2, I want to have some slides here so I can deform the mesh. Okay, so I can put something like eight, for example, and this will make my mesh to be like more friendly when I want to deform it. Okay, and just like that, we're pretty much done. So let's click here and click complete. Okay, so now that we have this, what we can do is to delete the parts that we're not gonna see. So we're going here to the poly edit and we're gonna click here and then gonna click here and I'm gonna delete them because I'm not really gonna see them, okay? Just click delete, accept, and that's it. Now, there are a couple of things that I need to do before. If I double click here on the static mesh, I will have collisions. How do I know? I can just go to show complex collision and now I will have everything of this will be a collision. And I don't want that. Okay, so I will go here to complex, go here, project default, and there you go. And now I can put something like a box collision if I want. Okay, there you go. Much simpler collision. Now, what we need to do is to add a texture here. So I'm going to my bridge here and I want to look for a rope here. And I'm going here to my surface. And here you can see you have a bunch of options. I already download this one. So I will click add and I download the medium quality because I really don't need much resolution for this. At least for this example, you can download the highest quality if you want or the high quality. The medium quality should be good that more, more than enough. So let's just click add. And there you will have my textures here. Okay, so well, let's have a look how it looks like. I can go here, put it here, and there you go. Now we have our rope and it's working great. Now it looks a little bit flat. Okay, so what we can do is to actually displace the geometry using the height map. Uh, to be honest, this can work for me because if I check from distance, and if it's G to check the game, I really won't see any difference. But if you really want to go into detail, uh, then just let's just add this just in case you want to have more detail. We can go here and go to the displace options here. There you go, displace. And you will see that by default, I have like a purling noise. Okay. So what I will do is to go here to texture to the map. And then here on displacement, I will choose this one, my mask, and I will put it here. So basically what I'm looking for, if I go to my content browser and I click here, if I check the blue channel, you will see that I have a height map here. And this is exactly what I want. So once I have my height, height map, I can just select this and I can just put it here and I can just change the channel to use the blue one. Now, uh, this kind of works, okay, but it's a little bit big. So I want to change this to something like two, for example. And you will see that I already have some uh, displacement going on. If I want more definition, I can put something like five for my subdivisions. Uh, but for me, like something like three or two should be more than enough. Like if I press one, that's a little bit too little. If I press two, three, three should give me this nice silhouette here. Awesome. So now that I have this, I click accept. And now we have a rope. Let's rename this rope. I click here on my content browser. I can F, press F2 and type SM rope. There you go. 
So now what we're going to do is to create a blueprint so that we can use this row to generate any other kind of variation. So to generate the variations of the ropes using the splines, we're going to create a blueprint. So I'm going here with control space to check my content browser. And I will just right click here and then create blueprint class. I'm going to choose an actor because it's something I will put in the map and I don't need any other class for this one. And I will just put it BP spline, something like that. Okay. You can name it any, you can put any name you want. Let me move this here. Okay. And now uh, what I will do here is to add a component. What I'm looking for is a spline component. Just like this. Okay. And as you can see, the spline component has two little dots. Okay. One is here and another one is here. Okay. It's basically like uh, two different points, zero and one. Okay. So what we will do is use the construction script because we will use this uh, blueprint to construct the rope. Okay. So what I will do is to drag this spline here. Okay. And I need to know how many spline points I have. Okay. So for example, uh, if I have two here, uh, let me draw this a little bit. I can have something like this, like zero or one, and I can move this spline point here, have something like two, and I can have here three. And remember that programmers start counting from zero and not from one. Okay, so it's like zero, one, two, and three. This is how many spline points we will have. Okay, and in order to get the maximum number of spline points, what I need to do is to go to my construction script and then go to get number of spline points. That's all we need to do. The next thing is we're going to put a loop here so we can loop for each spline point and add the mesh. So we're going to go here. I'm going to put a for loop. You don't want the for each loop. That's like for each class, for each instance. And we're going to do the for loop, which will only ask me for index. So what this will do is my first index will be my number zero, just like it's the first spline point. And the last one will be my last spline point. Okay. So, you know, this will give me like the number of spline points. So what I need to do is to do a minus one. There you go. So because we will start counting from zero, if I have four spline points, it means I have the spline point zero, one, two, and three. And I will just connect this to here. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is to add the mesh. And instead of going here to add the component, because there is a spline component for the spline mesh, I can put here and put a add spline mesh component. And what this will do is essentially go to here and add the spline mesh component. Now, here I can check my static mesh. So I can put the rope here. That's the reason I name it. Is because I can find it easier. I can put the rope here. And then the forward axis, I don't really need to change it here because I can change it later. Okay. So what I can do is to go here and then put a set forward axis. And I can actually grab this return value and set forward axis. And just like this, you will have the forward axis. What do I mean by this? So if we check our mesh here, let me go to Shift S F1 to have a bigger space. So the forward axis is this axis here. In our case, is the C axis here that is going into this direction. Okay. So this means all my meshes will go like from this direction, and the next one I will duplicate and I will put something like like this. This will be my second one, and this will be like my third one and so on. So it will use the X, uh, Z axis. If I put the X axis, which is what I had by default, it will do something like this every time you duplicate. And this is not something you want. So what you're going to do here is go here and put the Z value here. Click Save, Compile, and there you go. 
Now, the last part is that you need to set the start and the end points. Because a spline mesh component is a mesh that can be deformed. So it needs like from zero to one to select which parts of the meshes you're, you're going to extend. Okay. So what I will do here is to put the set start and end. There you go. So the target will be the self, which means this is the actor, and we need the start position and an end position. So I'm going to grab my spline point again, and I'm going to put like uh, get location at the spline point. Okay, this will give me the first location of the spline, okay, which is the zero. In the case of the loop, it will start from zero. And if I go here, this will mean give me the zero axis. And I will just put it here. I can also go here and get the tangent, get tangent spline point. And just like this, you will go here and drag this here to the tangent. Okay, click save. Now we just need the end position. Okay, so how do we get the end position? Well, if you check the splines here, let me delete this tree. So in this case, we're starting from zero here. And then we're going here. And this is one. Okay, and then we're going here. And this is two. So we're going to we already get this position. So to get the next one, we just only need to add one to get the next one. And if I want to go from the next loop from the one to two, I just need to add one to get this position. Okay, so we already get the start position and the end position just like this. So what I will do is to just go here, control C and control B. And now what I can do is to drag the spline here to get the positions based on this spline component. And then what I will do is to grab the index here. Remember, this is not always zero. It just starts with zero. And then the next one will be plus here. And then I can just put one here and I can drag this one here. There you go. Now I can just put the end position here and the end tangent here. Click compile. And with this, you should be good to go. Now, the target uh, should be this one, OK? Uh, this one will be the, the start and end position of this mesh. Remember, this is blind mesh, mesh component means that it will deform the mesh, OK? So let's try it out. We can go here to the, our blueprint spline. Let's save everything. Let's put it here. And as you can see, we already have this plan here. However, we don't see the material. And the reason is that default mesh we're using doesn't have the material. We only apply it inside the world. So what we can do is to go here and put the rope here. Uh, sorry, put the rope. There you go. Now you have your rope here. And now you can see we have our spline point. If you don't see the spline points, maybe you see something like this. It's because you are in uh, game mode. Okay, this game view. If you press G by accident, you will see it like this. It's like, oh, where is my spline points? Just press G and you will be able to see it. Or you can either click here to set the game view to off. And now what I can do is to drag one of the splines. And as you can see, the end point will be deformed. And let me remove the snapping for now. And also this one. OK, so now I can deform my mesh. And if I want new points, I can use Alt and click, Alt and click. And I can go to different axes. I can rotate a little bit. OK, I can do something like this. And this is a really nice way to basically create ropes for your game. You can basically have like a circle here remember do not deform too much otherwise you will need to add more spline points just by clicking out and click you will be able to rotate the spline and just like this we have some ropes now let's play our games check the size of the rope this looks pretty nice all right so now we have our rope so before we wrap it up um 
let's just try to have more control over our spline point. So what we can do in case you have different angles for your meshes, we can change this forward axis here directly on the editor. So instead of just changing it here, let's say it's, oh no, my mesh is pointing in the X direction. Oh no, it, it's not this direction. Let's just change another one. Instead of changing the blueprint, we can just drag here to create a variable. And this is the forward axis. And we will we'll just click here uh, with the uh, eyelashes and you will see that you have the open eye here. This means it means it's public variable, okay? So what we can do now is we can click here on our blueprint and you will see that I have my axis here that I can change. All right. So the last thing I want to add, in case you want collision, normally for this kind of meshes, you don't really want to put the collision, but in case you want it, you can go here to the spline mesh component and put the set collision enabled. And then you can just go here and then just put the collision enable. And this will use the collision you have in your static mesh. So now I can have some collision here. So for example, I can do something like this. So now if I play, you will see that I won't be able to walk, okay? Which is a little weird. So um, just in case, if you want to enable the collision, you can also put it here as a variable, promote to variable, and this will be like collision type, then click compile, and then you will go here. And if you don't want the collision, uh, sorry, let's just put this one public first, otherwise you won't see it. Uh, you can just go here and no collision, and then you will be able to pass through. And that's it. Now we have a little rope we can use in our games. So if you want to have this blueprint, I will put a link in the description where you can download this asset.